being dead. Too much packed in one scripture. Likewise, that word means that something was said earlier on. So likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Now, why would the Bible, there's no way where you read where scripture asks the women or the wives to dwell with their husbands according to knowledge. But we were instructed from verse 1, we were talking to the women. Then from verse 7, they say, husbands, when it comes to your case, you cannot just coexist with the women. You have to leave. The word leave means you are resident. You stay. You participate. You get involved with them in relation to knowledge. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. And if knowledge is not undergirding any husband's approach towards the wife, you're going to have a difficult home. Because the scripture went on and then told us why. He said, as weaker vessel. Now, the word weaker there suggests delicate. So, in other words, as delicate vessels. There are some items when you buy, they write on a curtain, handle with care, content delicate or fragile. The female species created by God is tender, is soft, is succulent. The female species, the weak vessel is not weak content. So, women are internally stronger, biologically proven. If you go into biology, when a man and a woman if you have sex, and the man release, ejaculate. When the sperms go, you know we have the Y and the X chromosome. The male, although is fast. It's not enduring. So when the male run very fast, but usually cannot compete to get to the egg, the female is slow but sure. That is why when it comes to even the issue of sexual satisfaction, the male have to understand that the man you are gas, just like a gas cylinder, just turn off, you are on. But the woman is like an electric stove. She takes time to come. And she takes time to go off. So a man who is not romantic. In counseling session, one of our greatest difficulties with the women is because a lot of women are not having orgasm. Uh, Can I really flow? All right, all right, okay. (laughs) All right, okay. Because the way people are looking at me, I'm wondering. I am an apostle, I can prophesy, but it's has to come and teach. <laughs> it's flowing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Somebody said that, assuming a woman has to have orgasm before she can get pregnant, you'll be surprised how many pregnancy will record in a year. That should tell you how few. Because a lot of women are not having orgasm. And do you know that sexual orgasm is medicine? I wrote a book called uh, Therapeutic Medicine Called Sex. Sex in itself is therapeutic. It's healing. It cures diseases. Any woman who is able to have more than seven multiple orgasms at, at one sexual intercourse, you can be sure you can live. Go and research all I'm saying. She can live healthy. The health benefit of orgasm for a woman cannot be overemphasized. No healthy woman here will replace orgasm with ten billion dollars. No. They will choose orgasm. That feeling, there is no other feeling in this world that can be compared to that feeling. When you see a woman who is sexually satisfied, she's emotionally stable, mentally calm, who 
homely attentive. But a lot of women are aging. Orgasm, they're, they're, this acne on a lot of women, their face, they are trying to buy all those stuff. Orgasm can take it away. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Maybe you should get my book, The Medicine Called Sex. They are all inside. No, no, because when that happens, okay, when that happens, you see, your, your body system operates on hormones and secretions. Now, the happening hormones, there are four. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. These four, they are critical in creating one happiness and serenity within a woman. So when a man has sex with a woman, both the man and a woman, that's why a lot of men, after sex, they just fall asleep. Because sex is a good sleeping tablet. So any woman who says, oh, because I am too tired, I cannot have sex, it's not really that, too, because even if you are tired, sex can relax you. Sex in itself is a relaxer. I am advocating, I, pr I pray that I'll get it, then my voice can go louder. I'm advocating sex break. Those of you who go to work and with, you are so stressed at work, afternoon, just me, go and meet your wife, go and meet your husband. Get a nice 30 minutes, cool one. By the time you are returning, you are calm. By the time you are returning, your brain is sound. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about men, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm talking more about women now. <laughs> I'm sorry. But if we have to talk about men being romantic, one of the end product is to, to pleasure the wife. A man who is not romantic can never achieve sexual success with a wife. That is why if you really want to enjoy sex in the evening, you have to start programming the woman's mind from the morning. The last picture she sees of you when you are walking out of the door. When you get to where the message you send to her. Like I said earlier on, they are not like, a man only needs a place to have sex. Women need a reason to have sex. So sex, okay, a lot of men enjoy sex. Women enjoy lovemaking. And there's a difference between sex and lovemaking. Lovemaking, we have two types. Body-centered one and person-centered. Number two, we have recreational one and procreational one. Number three, we have the one that you do for pleasure and the one that is for leisure. All can never produce good result without the man being romantic. One of the reasons why husbands are failing is because the Bible says, husband, love your wife. Love, love. The word is love. You see this masculine body? The man must be converted from a man to a lover. And it's a difficult thing. And most men are not ready to convert. I'm a masculine. And you are masculine. Like the old adage, a man must be fearful, uh, smelling. It's a cake. It's antediluvian. We have left that level long ago. A man must be ugly, uh, whatever, if possible, smell it. Ah, from, from, from which school of thought? How? No. No, that is, 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 is old school. It's no longer in the system. We have, if you are still there as the man, we have left you behind. Are we here? So, the masculine must be converted. Today, every husband... You must learn how to convert yourself from being a man to a lover. Oh, yeah. Women like women who are lovers. 
What does it mean to be a lover? The beginning is being romantic. So when the Bible said that dwell with them according to knowledge, what kind of knowledge? The knowledge that they are delicate. What kind of knowledge? The knowledge that they are soft, tender. And there's a way it must be handled. Unfortunately, a lot of husbands don't even study the body of their wives. It's so bad. You have to study the woman's body. Okay. Time is not on my side. When we said it should be romantic, number one, let me use the, 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 the letters to start with. R. A woman who wants a man to be romantic, he's saying that, ride me. R. Ride me. When you are on her, when you are alone with her, that is why they usually look as if they like the bad guys. They look like. No, they ride them. They are rough. A lot of the Christian boys are too gentle. You are too gentle. I am telling you, every, every sister who is married here, who is in the bedroom, one brother, ride the thing. Ride me, ride me. Oh yes, it's true. But most of us, sometimes either you are too gentle, or you are too holy, go, or you are, I can't tell, you know. You cannot even yobe, you cannot even compo compose a poem. You know, you see, to be a lover, you have to know how to sing a song, how to compose a poem, you know, how to convert a song. If you are looking for a man who will love you all the days, you must be able to convert all those poems. And sing for the woman. Yeah, you have to sing for her. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> yeah, you are. You take the crystal song. Give me you. Let me hear you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Sweet, I'd give me you. I hope I'm not too late. It's you, my dear. I'm longing for to take you to Jerusalem. So give me you. When I'm when I'm left with ten minutes, I'll run you through point, points because I wrote I have a lot of books. 30 things Christian men must learn about romance. 30 things they must do. 30 things you must learn. I have 10 commandments for Christian men who want to be romantic that you must follow. And these are practical. So we have to dwell with the woman according to our knowledge. What kind of knowledge? She's delicate. She's soft. She's amiable. So you can anything goes, anything does not go. Okay, is there is there a word in the Bible being romantic? You can't find that particular word romantic. But the Bible says that even let her breast satisfy you. And it's legitimate. The Bible says that marriage is honorable in all things and the bed is undefiled. I have learned by experience with the work I do aside my pastoral work, the, the coaching, the therapy and all those stuff, I realize that homes where Romans flee out is a dry home. Because romance is that lubricant. I think I should just leave my note and then. Romance is that lubricant that lubricates the wheels of affection in the relationship, in the marriage. If there is no romance, it's, you are dry. The marriage is dry. There's no oil. The least thing you are angry, 
so much resentment. Some of us, you are you are choke. You won't talk. Something is biting you. You are quiet. You don't want to talk. That is why three major areas of marriage problems: communication, sex, and money. Surprisingly, these are also the three major areas, positive areas. Sex, necessary, needed. Communication, needed. Money, needed. Although they are the three major problematic areas, they are also the three major areas of emphasis. And the key is communication, that's number one. Do we care to know that sex in itself, like I said two times, sex and lovemaking, is like a whole church service. There must be opening prayer. There must be uh, praise and worship. Oh, yes. It's called love making. See, when you are Christian, don't commit fornication, commit love. Get married, commit love. Christians, we commit love. You commit love. You, 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 don't, you don't commit fornication. Get married and then you, you, you call it, you commit to a love. It's a whole process. Fellowship. It's called fellowship. Like we said in normal worship, you come to church, you are worshiping God. Many of us, when last you cry even in worship. Your eyes are too dry. And we don't cry before God. Because we are stiff. There are no emotions. So, dwelling with the woman according to knowledge, brothers, daddies, fathers, you have to be intentional. Very intentional. I can promise you a lot of women who are married who are sitting here this morning, the, the last time they had orgasm, it's, it's been very long. Very, very, very long. They are, suff we call them the emotional suffocation. They are, they, emotionally, they are suffocating. And I'm saying that one of the fundamental reasons is because men are not romantic. It is the romance that drives the woman, that pushes the woman, that gradually entices her body to respond. Because you know, the women and the men, men what? Testosterone, so women what? Estrogen. The two work, they are respond and the way they work, it's, it's not the same way. So, Permit me to say, if you are a husband and you don't take care to caress the body of the woman, to cuddle the body, to touch the soft part, use your tongue, go to sensitive places, stay a little, rewind back. If you are not doing that, you are not born again. Because you must do what you call ear king. Hello, hello. You must do what you call ear king. No skin. You know ear king? Touch the ears. Kiss the ears. Kiss the... Kiss here. They like it. There's nothing wrong with it. Marriage is honorable. The bed is on the fire. Satisfy the woman. And the process will be achieved when the man starts being romantic. Do you know how your wife will feel when she's cooking in the kitchen? And then you just run, I'll show you, after her blues, and you just go behind her and just hold her from behind. Women, sisters, how do you feel? You do that, then you then you went back. Then she came, she was setting the dining table. Not when you were hiding under the dining table. You see. You see. You see why I'm saying that the event is difficult. You must be converted into a child. 
a child, a child. Any man who cannot be converted into a child, it will be difficult for you to play romantic games that will pleasure the heart of your wife, that will trigger her emotional secretions, that will cause a mental serenity to come on board. Today is <laughs> Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I received a blessing. I will show you things like sometimes. Let your wife dress. See, seduction is not a bad thing. God gave it to the women. It's a gift. Women have seven natural gifts. Number one, the vocal gift, ability to talk. That's why as a wife, your words must be building your husband. Must be equipping the husband. Because your words are sharp. The only thing sharper than the words of a woman is the word of God. Because the word of God is quick and sharper than two-edged sword, piercing, divide, a sound of souls and marrow. The next thing that can pierce. That can enter your bones. Marrows. Descend your thought. It's the words of a woman. God gave you the power of utterance. It's a gift. So use it. And there are seven types of words. Number one, soft words. Soft words. No. The, 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 we call something discretionary wisdom. When to say what? When not to say what? You, you choose the time in discretion. You, 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 a lot of, you know, one of the disadvantages is that some women grow up from home where she's uh, like, uh, SHS. She was the uh, uh, Jamal leader. Yeah, you are a Jamal leader. Oh. That attribute has been imbibed into you. So when you marry, you brought the Jamal attitude into the marriage home. Aho, aho, ya. No. No, no, no. You cannot be Rambo. You were Rambo before. If you bring that thing to the home, the man can't take it. The man wants to be the only lion in the jungle. Only lion. And he wants respect. And here's another deception, a little tilt deception. I don't know your thoughts, but they say, oh, the greatest need of a man is respect. I agree, men want respect. Women also want respect. But the man can't stand to be disrespected. But do you get to know that, Daddy, what is killing the man is not disrespect. It is lack of peace. What a man needs the most is peace of mind. What Samson got from Delilah was peace of mind. Oh. He will go and come back and come and put the, the head on the laps. Sister, can the man come back and put his head on your laps? How many of our sisters can boldly say that after your husband goes and fight everybody? Because the men, they are fighters. You go and rest there because God said, in your sweat you shall eat. And it's back, you have to go. Stuck with everybody and he's back home and the home too is a boxing room. So he must come back and put his head on your laps. Can you do that? You are in danger as a sister, as a wife, when another female is the one that listens to your husband. You are in danger. I believe that a lot of Christian men can do this. So we can take it further.
So, I was telling you about the powers of a woman, the power of utterance. Number one, seduction. God gave it to them. It must be used within the confine of a marriage. Every wife, you have all the power, all the backing to seduce your husband. You have to do that. Do it. Entice the man. The thing is in our eyes. Be intentional. In the home, in the hall, in the kitchen, in the bedroom. Do that intentionally. So, I'm trying to say that husbands, sometimes take your wife out. She's sitting in the car. She's not coming out. The way she's dressed, eh? She's short skirt, nice. You are sitting in the seat, you are watching and you are driving. You pack, you go and buy ice cream. You bring the ice cream to her in the car. She sits, sits inside the car, she's taking the ice cream and you are moving around. It's a nice thing. It's a nice thing. Let the dress hot. Hot. Let her just sit down in the car. She's not coming out. Dr. Yongichu of Blessed Memory had an issue one day and went to God. And God said, listen to your wife. So according to him, one day every week is for the wife. As busy as the man is, before, before uh, Pastor Adeboy and Co. now have the biggest church, he was having the largest church. As busy as he was, he can take a day, one day in every week, it's for the woman. Whatever you want to do, you do. We are going shopping, we go shopping. Anything the woman wants to do in that day, it's just for her. By experience, once our mothers are happy in the house, the home will be happy. Your wife, father, husband, you want to make sure that the wife is happy. And you get to know one of the natural ways to get your wife happy is to pleasure her. Oh, yeah. Pleasure her. So romantic, write the woman. Oh, observe your wife. Listen to me. Noticing a little change in your wife, she interprets that care and attention. So every woman really wants you to observe it. The hair has changed. Notice it. Talk. The mood has changed. Notice it. It's romance. They like it. Sometimes they can do it too much, expecting it to be a Holy Ghost, but you're not Holy Ghost. But they like it. Observe. Even as a leader. Noticing a little change in your people. Oh, today after church, calling for me. You are not too happy. What happened? Notice women interpret that as love, care, attention. And once she feels like that, her body comes on board. She doesn't have resentment. One of the difficult things for a woman to do is when she's resenting the husband and you are sleeping with her. Observe her. Notice a little change. Make comment. Change the hair. Make comment. The mood change. Make comment. You know something? Make comment. Notice. That's why they want you to ask questions. To the man, more question is interrogation. To the woman, more question is care. So the woman, you have to ask more than three times. Are you okay? You must come and ask again. Are you okay? You must come and ask again. Don't be tired, though. If you get tired, she will say, eh, I know, you don't really care. You are just doing it as a responsibility. And as a duty. True romance are just little things you do in creative ways. Usually for no special reason. I'll come again. True romance are just little things that you do in creative ways. Usually for no special reasons. They see, they are happy. You just call in the middle of the day. When last did you pull out around 12 afternoon? You, you just pack your car, you just call your wife. Yo, I just want to check up on you. How you doing? I just, I'm just missing you. Oh, 
before you know, that afternoon, somebody is disturbing her mood, seriously. That's your call, brightens her mood, and she's happy. I know you won't clap, no problem. And, and we can achieve this if we become intentional. Oh, we men there, we are like that. No, 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 no. It's a weakness. It's a weakness. I think my time is up. Uh, just give me five minutes. And hear this. I should take ten. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like the 10. So that I can I'll give you also the 10 commandments for fathers. I want to give you a daily basic stuff you can do. Number one. Number one. When traveling, give a rose, a card with love inscription for each day you'll be away. You see, you see, you see, hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you actionable, uh, practical ways you can express your romance. When you are traveling, try it and see. Just try it for one week. Just try this and see. Place a flower on her pillow for no special reason. Take a walk together, holding hands. When last you do that? When last you do that? Most of even if you are, even if you are coming to church, the man is in front. <laughs> even if you are standing waiting for Uber, Uber, hold their hands, hold their hands, pull it by your side. She's your wife. Put your hand, your head on there, this thing, on the shoulder. Play with the hair. Play with the hair. Play with the hair. Unless you stop paying for the hair. <laughs> right, I love you. Right, I love you on the bathroom with the soap on the mirror when she's coming to bath. Are you, are you, are you hearing them? You... <laughs> I am telling you, little things you do in a creative way, you are a romantic uh, brother. Listen, wash and iron for her. Wash and iron for her. Sometimes her underwears. And the man will say, hey, then I'm wondering why, how you sometimes even remove the things to do the thing. <laughs> they like it. I own it. Wash and untie her hair. Once in a while, you see the hair. Sit down. Let her sit down. Do it. Whilst you are conversing, do it. By the time you finish that hair, that woman is emotionally charged. Emotionally charged. She can take the world for you. Women, I said, they are stronger than men. So men, don't fight them. You don't have the energy. Women, get, women gain energy by fighting. Men lose energy by fighting. That is why... When a man is dating, a woman who is always arguing with her. You can see that mentally you are going down. You are losing energy. You go insane. That's why the mental health of men is at stake. Today we are launching a new program we are bringing for, for men. Man that have unplugged. This one we talk about men. Their mental health, their well-being, the stress men go through. Nobody knows men are dying in silence. Why are they dying in silence? They are not talking. They are not vocal. They are quiet. When you look at all that work men do, the stress, the work we do. So we are bringing a show just to talk to men. How to live long, take care of your health. 
Women gain strength by arguing. Men, you lose strength when you argue. So when there's a fight in the house, she's saying, I'm going to come back. <laughs> and it is true. She's, she's eager to return home. But you, the man, <laughs> once you are out, <laughs> even if you are coming back to your own house, You are spying. <laughs> she is sitting in the hall waiting for you. <laughs> so here's the deal. Practice the law of advanced forgiveness. Just like how God did for us. The solution is older than the, what, the crime. The forgiveness is older. So your sins for yesterday, today, and forever is forgiven. You forgive the woman. You don't argue with her. You can't win. Even if you win an argument, you are a loser. If you win an argument over your wife, you are a loser. You lose the house, you lose the bed. You lose the pillow. <laughs> Don't try to win an argument. You have not been wired to argue. You will die early. Declare them winners. Today on Friday. <laughs> Today on Father's Day, we have declared the women winners. Please, please, my time, my time, four minutes. <laughs> Listen, cuddle, cuddle her up in front of fire, movie, TV. When last you watched a nice romantic movie with your, with your wife? sitting down. Another thing is that there are sometimes allow when you are watching a movie, let her own the remote control. <laughs> let her own the remote control. Darling, today I dash you the remote control. <laughs> Anything you watch, I watch. <laughs> Anything you see, I see. <laughs> Anything you hear, I hear. Today, I am your follower. <laughs> it's okay. Ten commandments for fathers. Number one. Because it's Father's Day around three. Number one. Thou shalt not have another lover, admirer, confidant than your wife. <laughs> Thou shalt not have another lover, admirer, confidant than your wife. Number two, thou shalt not speak ill of thy family, both in public or in private. Number three, remember the needs and the concerns of your family. Keep them private as it is not for public consumption. Number four, thou shalt not compare thy family with other families. Number five, six days thou shalt work, labor and toil. Seventh day, create a private Sabbath for your family. Number six, Thou shalt not insult, fight, or quarrel with your family, your wife, lest your home become a spare part. Thou shalt not hold grudges or bitterness against your family, but thou shalt forgive them 70 times 70 in a day, lest your prayers be hindered. Number eight, thou shalt make your family happy all the time. Always find out if they are okay. Number nine, honor and respect your parents in law so you don't create enemies you cannot do without. Number 10, thou shalt not steal the affection and the care of your family and give it to a strange girl, lady, woman, lest the future of your kids be destroyed. Jara 11, thou shalt not recklessly mention the name of your family anyhow and joke with them Irrationally, God richly bless you. Let's please be upstanding. Two instructions, and I go out of your way. There are some two women here. You have been starving your wife, yes, sorry, your husband of sex. And it's serious. When I was coming, the Lord spoke to me. I'm pleading to you. Pleading. Tonight, change. 
I'm not talking about one week. This two I'm talking about is more than a month plus. You are not. You are decided. You don't starve a man with sex. Just like how as a mother we were taught you don't starve children with food. You don't punish a man with sex. It's a difficult thing to do. That two women, I encourage you by the voice of the Lord. The Lord is speaking to you. That that decision is a wrong decision. Find a better way to resolve the matter. But please, 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 please honor the marriage bed. And let it start tonight. Number two, I, I'm not calling people forward, but I'm just saying it. There's another man here. Well, the contemplation about the divorce, it's not a thing to consider. See, pastor, it's not a thing to consider. Don't. Don't. The Lord said, don't. You know yourself. Lift up your two hands. In one minute, we want to pray for all the fathers. Just a minute, say a prayer based on what you have heard. What prayer will you want to pray? It's a need. It's a necessity. Being romantic, it creates joy. It creates affection. It creates calmliness in the home. Holy Spirit, help us. The Holy Spirit so is a romantic spirit. We fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The men have to be, and it's important we are. Even in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Father, let decisions be made this morning. Let somebody be encouraged. Let the Spirit of the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit, let the teaching Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, brood. You are the answer to every impossible question. How? Mary said, how can this thing be? And he said, the Holy Spirit. As many who are saying, how can it? How can I? Holy Spirit, you have an answer to all difficult questions in marriages, in relationships that are on the verge. I ask in the name of Jesus. Malia Lodo Sebadi Eden. We will love our partners. 